Oopsie doopsie, AMD's GPUs are overheating. I think we know who should replace Elon Musk as CEO of Twitter and Intel is shaking up their graphics department. <laughs> yeah, let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And today's top story is about AMD acknowledging the fact that they might need to look into the fact that their coolers might be running a little hot. According to reports, there are some difficulties that are coming along with AMD's reference coolers. The MBA or made by AMD designs are suffering from some thermal issues, namely in the hot spot temperature. So if you only look at what the core temperature is on your GPU, you're going to be more than fine because everything can be hunky dory there. But according to reports, the MBA designs are reporting hotspot temperatures that are potentially 53 degrees Celsius higher than the GPU temperature. So you're looking at having 110 degrees Celsius on a 56 degree GPU, which could be a problem. AMD's spokesperson responded to Hardware Lux, who has been investigating all of these details, with AMD saying our GPU team is looking into it. But one of the things to know is that other GPUs, like the non-reference version, are only having hotspot temperature deltas around 20 degrees Celsius, or well under half of what's going on with AMD. So it is normal for the hotspot to be hotter, but it is not normal for them to get up to 100 degrees Celsius, which could potentially be accounting for some of the weird performance issues that a lot of people have been reporting with their 7900 XTX, and namely in the clock speeds being super variable, depending on what it's doing in each game. Some games it can get up to 2.9 gigahertz, other games only 2.3 gigahertz, but Hardware Lux stating that they suspect that it's an uneven contact pressure that's responsible for the high temperature differences on the AMD GPU. Now, it might be possible to fix this with washers. We've seen this happen before where you could just add a washer and then you get better contact and better cooling on the reference edition cards, or this could potentially require AMD to issue some sort of RMA process in order for this to get fixed by the people who purchased the reference edition of these cards, which is me because I bought one yesterday. I finally got in. It took me so long. We don't get review samples here at UFD Tech. I don't know if you guys know that. So I got to hunt them down just like the rest of you. And finally, on AMD's own website yesterday at, at 10 oh. 3 a.m. Eastern time, they popped up, I snagged one, and now I just have to worry about it overheating. Let me know, if you've picked up one of the 7900 XT or XTX cards with the reference edition cooler, you seeing problems? How's your hotspot temperature? Let me know down below in those comments. Well, I let you know about today's video sponsor. My friends, today's video is sponsored by Ugreen. Ugreen wants to power up your holiday season and they have their DigiNest Cube 65 watt charging station to help do that. It has seven different ports to allow you to plug in essentially everything that you could possibly need. It's powered by a GAN3 chip and it delivers 65 watts of high speed power to a 13 inch MacBook Air, as well as any other high end devices that you have, but it can charge that MacBook Air in less than an hour and a half. The front's got two USB-C ports, two USB-A ports, ports, and then you have regular outlets all along the side, making it so that you can plug in a whole lot of stuff. But it also comes with peace of mind because it has overload, overcurrent, and grounded protection along with many other security features. And they currently have holiday offers going on right now, including a Ugreen Christmas present, which I received, which comes with the DigiNest Cube, a 100 watt desktop charger, and a Ugreen USB-C to HDMI Ethernet adapter, making it so that I have all of the functionality and connectivity that I could possibly want. So let Ugreen power up your holiday holiday season with their DigiNest 65 watt cube. Check them out at the link in the video description. Big thanks to you, Green, again for sponsoring today's video. But it's not just AMD's GPUs that can get hot. It's it's everything. All, all computers everywhere get warm. And this next one might get very spicy. Intel's upcoming laptop chips are expected to be 24 cores, just like the desktop chips. The upcoming i9-13900HX has been benchmarked and it's what is happening. It is so fast. So comparing its Geekbench score to the 12900K and the 13700K, what you'll find is that the notebook chip, the 13900HX, is faster than both of those, than the previous generation's desktop flagship. That is absurd. The 13900HX is supposed to have a MTP of 157 watts, boost up to 5.4 gigahertz, 24 CPU cores, 32 threads. This is just, this is insane. Obviously, this is partially because that there's been improved improvements in the Raptor Lake architecture, also because it has 50% more cores than the 12900K. But we recently did a video here on UFD Tech where
where we put a 13900K under a low profile cooler, which you can check out right up there. And it managed to beat my 12900KS on a 360 mil liquid cooler. So it does appear like there are improvements on the 13th gen that just make them beastly. I mean, you wouldn't want this for sustained loads on your lap. You could put this on your desktop and you could, you have a very fast laptop. It's crazy, but we're also getting details coming out about what GPU you might want to pair that with. 32 threads, you want to mix that with an RTX 4090 mobile. Well, there's details indicating that NVIDIA is going to be launching a 4090, 4080, 4070, 4060, and 4050 GPUs for their laptops at CES. And you can see the TGP that they're going to be targeting with those GPUs right there. This is their max performance version, not this won't be what the efficient ones are. And you can see right here, like the 4050 will be variable from 85 watts to 140 watts. The 4090 will be from 150 watts to 175 watts. We still have to see what the performance is going to be like, but 24 cores, 32 threads mixed with an RTX 4090 in a lap. That's going to be so expensive, so hot, so loud, and just, man, can we get back to liquid cool laptops? I'd love to see that in, in, in that form factor again, the Asus one with the dock and you slap it together. And I'm going to slap some crypto stonks together in this hot news. Bitcoin's down, so is Ethereum, and so is Dogecoin. You're welcome. And just staying in the crypto news side of things, the FTX founder who has been arrested in the Bahamas for a ton of stuff that went wrong with FTX and money laundering and embezzling charges and all of that is now officially being extradited to the United States and is on his way back as we speak. And as I speak, Reese is sleeping, but he's going to get UFD deals for you in this video. So you watch that now. Thanks, Reese. I wish I could extradite you to the US on non criminal charges, just on love and an airplane. Sorry, shouldn't have gone there. And you shouldn't go to Google Voice. If you want to sign up for Twitter's two factor authentication, Twitter unenrolling the ability to use Google Voice for 2FA. People who used it were going to be locked out of their accounts, not getting text messages, and you can no longer use a Google Voice number to sign up for it. This appears to be part of the bot purge that Elon Musk has been promising with regards to Twitter. And it turns out that Twitter is deciding instead of removing individual offenders, the company identified mobile networks associated with large spam networks in specific countries and blocked users who relied on those networks from receiving SMSs, receiving SMS messages from Twitter, impacting people with two-factor authentication. Then it blocked traffic from those carriers completely. Kind of a scorched earth policy instead of actually trying to work with it on a minute level. It's just to get rid of all of the people who could potentially even be using it for legitimate reasons. Who cares? And part of that is because uh, Elon Musk needs to save $3 billion for Twitter, stating that Twitter has a $3 billion negative cash flow. And that's to explain all of the hacking and slashing that's been doing with the company lately, saying that we have an emergency fire drill on our hands. This company is like you're in a plane that is headed towards the ground in high speed with the engines on fire and the controls don't work. That's the reason for my actions that may seem spurious. And part of this is because Twitter took on $12.5 billion of debt in order to help fund the acquisition. And so $1.5 billion in debt has to be serviced every single year, which helps to account for half of that cash flow that they're burning through. With Elon continuing to say not good since Twitter has a billion dollars in cash, so that's why I spent the past five weeks cutting costs like crazy, but he believes that potentially Twitter can be solvent by hopefully late next year. Also moving forward and stating that he will step down as the CEO of Twitter and he's going to handle some other stuff, saying that he will resign as a CEO as soon as I find someone foolish enough to take the job. After that, I will just run the software and servers teams, which is strange because that's not what the poll was. The poll was that you should step down, not, th not that you should step down when you find somebody. It was just, yes, please do it right now. I guess there was contingencies we weren't aware of, but the truth is I think we all know who should run Twitter. And, and this is this is a real tweet that exists. MySpace Tom's up for the job. Look at him. He's ready to go. He's online now. Kyler, you want MySpace Tom to run Twitter? He's got my vote. He's got Kyler's vote. Are you legally allowed to vote on Twitter? Uh, Do you have Twitter blue? Are you illegally voting? Um, uh, uh. I don't know if you should make those noises off camera. That's kind of strange. 
But Elon Musk's other companies also not potentially doing well with reports coming out that Tesla is going to start to have to implement a hiring freeze again, as well as a round of layoffs expected to take place in Q1 of 2023. This is due to a lot of different factors. Tesla, number one, not selling as well due to the fact that there is a tax credit that's coming in the new year. So they're not selling as many new vehicles right now because people are holding off to that to the point where Tesla is even offering an incentive to give you $3,750 back on your car if you purchase with that right now, but it does look like Tesla is not potentially uh, doing splendidly. But they're not the only EV company having issues, okay? GM has to recall the Chevy Bolt again for fire issues, but it's not what you think. Kyle, are you ready for this? I, you know, I don't think I am. 140,000 Chevy Bolts are getting recalled because their carpets can catch on fire. Can't all carpets Part of it is because the front seatbelt's pretensioner can deploy and come in contact from the exhaust gases on the pretensioner and catch the carpet on fire. Chevy just made a death trap. <laughs> I want one. It's so cheap to get one. They're like 26 grand to start. And then you got the $7,500 tax credit that's coming up. That's like less than 20 grand to get like a modestly respectable around town electric vehicle. But I don't want to die or have my house burned to the ground because I, I left it outside and it was too close to the garage. But also Rivian having issues. They had to remove one of their models because they said that they're not going to make it anymore. The Max Pack Battery Plus Quad Motor is being removed as an option for the R1T electric pickup truck that they have, indicating that it's just not going to work for them to put it into production. They will have a Max Pack version available later, but it's not the current one that's here right now. You can only get Max Pack in the dual motor, but they're not being very clear on what exactly. And we talked about in a previous episode of Hot News that Apple TV was not going to make the bid to be part of NFL Sunday ticket, but it turns out that YouTube TV is going to be the one to acquire it with sources reporting that Google is the one who's going to follow through on the deal. So expect your YouTube TV subscription subscriptions to go through the moon. And you know what's through the moon? A lot of money. For some reason, I don't know. That didn't make any sense. Gamers are suing Microsoft for the acquisition of Activision. This is on top of the FTC lawsuit that came across to Microsoft saying, hey, you, you're anti-competitive. And now gamers are like, yeah, we agree. 10 gamers from California, New Jersey, and New Mexico have got together to file a lawsuit against Microsoft saying that they believe this is going to cause problems with Sony and public would suffer losses and that if it went through that they Microsoft would have the ability to foreclose rivals, limit output, reduce consumer choice, raise prices and further inhibit competition. Microsoft said, nah, -uh. the steel would expand competition and create more opportunities for gamers and game developers as we seek to bring more games to more people. That's not true. It's just not true that like you're, you're the only possible outcome of this is that you restrict it to your ecosystem after 10 years. That's it. There's no way you bring it to more people unless you're talking about expanding your own platform. It's nonsense. I don't know whether or not Microsoft should acquire Activision. I'm just saying that their arguments are fallacious. You know, it's not fallacious. It's finally over 9,000. That's right, the megahertz on a CPU has finally crossed the nine gigahertz barrier. The 13900K is now being reported as the fastest frequency overclocker. It already set that record, but on liquid helium, overclockers managed to get the 13900K up to a max clock speed of 9.009 gigahertz, which is just with the extreme overclocker saying that the 13900K is one of the most well-behaved CPUs that they've seen under liquid helium, which can bring the temperatures down to 250 degrees Celsius below zero, which is, this is just absurd. They had to disable all of the E cores, eight P cores running at nine gigahertz. This is crazy. This is like Intel, whatever architecture stuff they did on 12th gen and now on 13th gen, they have, I mean, they've knocked it out of the park. It's, it's just, some of this stuff is crazy good. Runs really well on a low profile cooler, runs really well on liquid helium. 13900K is a beast. I can't, we gave away three of these on the cannonball. It's wild. And yet I still have two in this office. Kyler, did you know we have two 13900Ks? Why? I, it just happened that way. Did it, can, we, can we stick them together and make them 14? Yeah, we'll stick them together. We'll rub them together real fast. 
But it's not all good news on Intel's side of things because the reports are coming out that they are breaking up their graphics division. Now, hold on, it's not all fire and brimstone. It just means that they're gonna be separating out the gaming division from their enterprise cloud computing. All of the data center GPUs are gonna be in something completely separate. And that means Rajak Dori, who was the head vice president of the AXG business unit is now being redirected to be the Intel chief architect, which he was previously. But Intel saying that discrete graphics and accelerated computing are critical growth engines for Intel with our flagship products now in production. We're evolving our structure to accelerate and scale their impact and drive go-to market strategies with a unified voice to customers. This includes our consumer graphics team joining our client computing group and our accelerated computing teams joining our data center and AI group. But Tom's Hardware talked with Intel asking, hey, are Battle Mage and Celestial still coming to gaming GPUs? And Intel was like, yes, they are. Why are you asking this? And the reason we're asking this is because one person, one place, one time said, hey, they're not going to do that. And so you got to verify every single time something happens with Intel's GPUs. Hey, you going to give us more gaming GPUs? Yes. Well, Intel, you're liars because I heard it once that they're not going to do it. I'm not still bothered by that. Comfort oh, no, my memory card. That's the end of hot news. Goodbye.